This is the Marine Lab. So Marine Studies is one of the subjects we do in Year 11 and 12 and Earth Environmental Science. It's a subject that I teach both of, as well as Mr. McLean, who teaches Marine Studies, Ms. Todoroska, who teaches Earth Environmental, and Ms. Brown, who also does Earth Environment. The first question I've been asking any of the groups is which of you would be interested when you finish school to be going, at least thinking towards going towards university. The reason I ask because it's, there's a difference in the courses that's very, very distinct between the two. I'll start with the Earth Environment course first, mostly because it is an ATAR subject. The Marine Studies course, on the other hand, is not an ATAR subject. And that has advantages and disadvantages depending on what you want to do. Okay? The Earth and Environment course is a course which is a multidisciplined science course. So it has geology, it has biology, it has chemistry. So it has a number of different elements that are kind of broadly put together underneath the term Earth and Environmental Science. The Earth side of things, we're obviously talking from a geology, from the rocks and the soils. From the environment, we're looking more towards the biology, to the plants and the animals. And it's how the two things come together and how the interaction of humans with those things can benefit or can be harmful. So essentially, it's a course which allows us to study a number of different sciences in one course. Okay? Now, from a mining point of view, geology is very important. Okay? But from an environmental point of view, environmental science also is a very popular course at universities at the moment as well. How we get you to start off the course and get involved in it is we look at the local. The fact that we live in this area, in New South Wales, in the middle of a caldera, of a volcano, is an awesome situation for us to study this course from. It's a geology course that, as I've said, has things like the biology of rainforests and the animals that live within. The area that we live in is spectacular for that. Okay? When you think of Mount Warning there as a volcano, remember that it's not. It's only the plug in the center. When you remember that all of the volcano, all of the mountains that are around are not individual mountains, but just the walls of a mountain volcano that was the biggest shield volcano in the southern hemisphere, and the erosion of that mountain, or that volcano that has left the walls and the plug, has created the soils that we have around here, you'll understand that We've got perfect case studies in this area to study this course. Okay? The soils obviously are the reasons that we have rainforests and we have the kind of flora and fauna of this environment. But they're also the reasons that we have excellent agriculture in this area as well. So we can look at man's impact on the environment as well as the natural environment around us. So we start the course in year 11 with a local area study which allows you to get at least some context of what the course is about in your local environment and kind of draws you in to, to things that you can conceptually at least see around you. We do field trips over to Burley and we have obviously we've got the rainforest at the back here, we've got the tape there with out the back of the tape where all the soils and the agriculture is and we're able to look in and do lots of soil tests and kind of practical work through that. So we do local environment first and this starts to bring in the geology and the biology sections to it, okay? Planet Earth, we start to look more at a bigger picture. So if we look at the small and we look at the local environment, we can start to look at the larger aspects of how the planet has been created, where it came from, how planet Earth came to be in a solar system and other planets surrounding the star. We don't really go out into the wider universe, but if we think of our local area being the Tui Valley volcano, but in a larger context of being our solar system, we start to look at how the planets formed. Where did the planets come from? The accretion of all the bits of rock that made the planet. Once we have a planet formed, where does the water come from? One of the few planets that we know of that has water, and where did it come from? And there, how did life first begin? So through all sorts of cultures, we've got stories and we have beliefs, but from a scientific point of view, where does life begin? So we look at the, the, the ins and outs of where, the, in the oceans, where life began. And then once life began, we then look as the next 4.6 billion years progress, we look at the overall context of how life expanded, 
diversified, evolved, and then through a series of mass extinctions, almost wiped the life out, and then restart. So from things like, as you know, the dinosaurs, we had, you know, meteorite 65,000 years ago, gets rid of the dinosaurs. But we've had at least four other events before that. Snowball Earth, for example, North Pole, South Pole, to the point where they encapsulated the whole planet in ice, so it looked like a snowball, almost wiped out all the life on planet Earth as well. Most of the life was, was left sort of huddled around thermal vents under the oceans. Once the ice recedes, it gets a second chance. We've had a number of other events, so studying those and how the context of life started, was almost wiped out, and how we are here today. Okay? So we look, as I said, local. We look at historical context of the Earth. Okay? And then, when we're looking at the planet, the fact that we do have earthquakes and volcanoes. We have dynamic Earth in year 11, tectonic impacts in year 12. We're looking at natural disasters. We're looking around the world as to how the world has been affected from a human point of view, but also from a global point of view through all sorts of agricultural sort of disasters because of volcanoes, how that's affected. So we go local, we go global, we do historical, okay? And from your environmental point of view, things like caring for country and water issues. Australia, driest inhabited continent on the world. We've got it again, as a, as a nation, we've got a great example. So look at how water as a resource is a very valuable thing that needs to be cared for and looked after. So as environmental scientists, we've got good case studies in this country to see, well, we're already under pressure. How can we modify? How can we come up with solutions? Caring for country in year 12 looks at other things like pesticides, like salinity issues that we have, like soil erosion and management of agriculture. All of these kind of practice environmental sciences, things that if you're into that sort of biology or chemistry, things that can come together and we look at it from an environmental point of view. Now these courses do cross over. I've had kids who've been in my course before who've left and gone to bio and said, oh, we've just done this on Earth, and vice versa, they've come to me, we've just done things in bio. So these courses do cross over with things, okay? But as I say, it does have an emphasis also on the geology with the Earth. So the Earth meets the environment, and I say from kids who've gone through my course who are at university, you know, their first year of university is almost similar to what they've done in year 12. They say, oh, sir, we did this with you last year. It's just exactly what we're doing, okay? The geology things, obviously, we've got a big mining boom. There's mining going on. This It has it has implications for jobs there. But from the earth point of view, so from the environment point of view, there are all sorts of earth science or environmental science um, degrees and jobs that are involved with that side of things a lot. So it kind of covers that sort of area there. Again, as I say, it is an ATAR subject. There are assessments and examinations as there are with all of our sciences in, in our department. Okay, It has university, workplace, or vocational jobs attached with kind of a course of this of this kind. Okay? So as I say, it is, it, it is an academic subject from a resources point of view. We have lots and lots of resources. We have things like, it, from an academic point of view, we have textbooks, but we also have the dot point booklets. We have HSC online that we access and give you copies of. So we've got lots and lots of backup material, as well as all sorts of minerals, rocks, practicals that we can do because we have access to the environment that the schools in. Okay? So that's Earth and Environmental Science. 